Colin Horst is the chief U.S. economist at City. Andrew is with me now from New York. Um, so the medicine would appear to be working, um, and I'm assuming you're in the 90 percent of economists that believe it'll be a quarter point at the, Nef at the next Fed meeting. I am, in fact, not Richard. I am in oh. that 10 percent of economists out there that still think this could be 50 basis points. Um, and, and I'll tell you why. I mean, it's because you, you're right. I mean, it's certainly we're off the peaks in terms of inflation. Very good news to see things like gasoline prices coming down. That makes a big difference to individuals um, in just terms of day to day cost of living. Um, what, what I am concerned about is we still have a lot of wage pressure. We still have a lot of momentum in this economy. So has that really cooled down enough? Um, and then the other thing is, if I look at financial conditions broadly, we have interest rates are lower now. We have equity prices that are higher. That's not going in the right direction to slow down the economy. So I am in that 10% that group. All right. If they did nothing and just carried on, since, uh, since inflation is already falling, if they didn't do any more, wouldn't it just continue to fall? So I, I think there are elements that look like they will fall. So goods is where we've really seen a lot of slowing down in terms of price increases and some price decreases. Used autos is probably the best example. We had a big run up. Those are coming down now. Shelter prices, we know house prices are coming down. Now, if you get into some of the detailed mechanics of how these numbers are put together by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, it's going to take some time for that to show up. But we know that we're going to see cooler shelter prices and inflation. The area that concerns me is what we call non-shelter services. So things like education, health care, right. travel. That's where you may need to see more restriction from the Fed, or at least the level of restriction that they're talking about. And I'll tell you what's going on in financial markets today is the markets are not just saying, oh, the Fed's going to hike 25 basis points in February. They're questioning now whether the Fed will continue to hike after that. So that's really what they're, they're dealing with in terms of their communication here. So the rally arguably is a little, I don't just mean today, I mean we're on a three-day rally in a sense, uh, arguably a little premature. I, I would think so. I would think so. And I would think if I were Chair Powell and I was watching what was going on, I would say, yes, good news on inflation, uh, good news that the economy is still performing, right? There's a lot of good right. news out there right now, uh, but a little bit concerned that financial conditions keep easing and this rally continues. So Olivia Blanchard, who you'll remember, was the chief economist of the IMF. Olivia was on this program last night and we were talking about the rate of inflation when the Fed really has to decide do we keep going? And he says 3%. If you get to 3%, ah, we can call it even Stevens and we don't need to keep pushing down to the last 1%. Do you think that or do, are, you of the, are you of the hair shirt mentality that believes it must be strict and severe all the way to 2%? So I, I don't know if we need to be strict and severe about 2%, but it is a concerning notion that the Fed would start guiding today that they are going to ease up when we get to 3%. And, and the reason why is once we start to think the Fed might, well, you know, we're going to call 3% close enough to 2%. Well, then why wouldn't we think that they would call 4% close enough to 3% or 5% close enough to 4%, right? That's that's the kind of logic that the market will work with and that the public will work with and, and, and say, is this a Fed that's really committed to bringing down mm -hmm. inflation? So that's why I, I you know, I, I, I completely understand the point that's being made. Uh, we should not put the economy into a recession to move from 3% to 2%. But there needs to be that strong, resolute messaging about getting inflation back to 2%. Otherwise, we start to question the whole enterprise. Andrew, I'm looking forward to discussing this many times in the weeks ahead uh, as we see the machinations. Thank you. Grateful for your time tonight. Now, back Thanks, to... Richard.